Hey everyone, it's Lisa Seltover from Spot on Agility. How you doing? All righty here. Um, I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes to get logged on and to join me. I have a really exciting announcement and uh, just, yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> I always laugh when it comes to uh, doing Facebook Lives. I think I'd rather cut my dog's nails than actually do a Facebook Live. Um, hey, Janine, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, I'll give it a few more minutes, let a couple other people join. Um, yeah, so I was talking about how doing a Facebook Live really is kind of a scary event for me. Um, hey, Mary. Hey, Bree. Um, <laughs> thanks. So glad you love my uh, picture. It was actually a judging gift. And uh, yeah, I, I always love it behind me. I figure if anything, people aren't looking at me, they're going to be looking at the Dalmatian picture behind me. So. <laughs> Uh, so I was saying I would rather cut my cat's toenails than do a Facebook Live. So if uh, if I'm here, it means I've really got something exciting to share. Um, <laughs> I would rather compete in Agility National with televisions all around with the big booms than do Facebook Lives. So <laughs> anyway, kind of tells you a little bit about my uh, my judging <laughs> history here. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me at 6.01. I'll go ahead and get started. All right, earlier this year, I put out um, a post, and it was really geared toward beginner agility folks, but it was also asking those of you who have experience competing to share some of your stories, uh, good and bad, from when you were a beginner. And um, I got hundreds of replies, hundreds. I've had lots of conversations back and forth from January through now. And what has really hit home for me is the fact that there isn't a bridge that's helping beginner or novice agility folks who are just starting to learn agility. There isn't a bridge to help them to transition over into competition agility. And the irony is the reason that we have all these training classes is because of agility competitions, right? So that's generally where your courses come from. That's where your sequences come from that you train in class. That's really, you know, the direction that agility, um, you know, that's, that's the first place that we go to is the agility trial is really determining where we're going as a whole. So when we have beginner and novice folks that are taking these training classes because it looks like fun. And by the way, trainers are doing an amazing, amazing job. The trainer's job is to help these teams to develop not only their handling skills, um, but also to help, you know, decide what type of contact performance the dog is going to have to help people become consistent as they develop as agility teams. So the trainers are doing a wonderful job at that. Um, people then get to a certain point where they say, okay, hey, I want to compete into agility. And really, these new beginner agility folks, they're getting thrown to the wolves. I mean, they literally go from the trial environment where they can use toys, they can use treats, they have the do-overs, they can touch their dogs, um, you know, they can touch the equipment. And then they go into the competition ring and there is a huge gap between the transition of training and trialing. So where that really has become apparent for me over the years is, um, Lisa Mena, I just love you. Thank you for the very nice comment. <laughs> um, what has really become a, a apparent to me over the years as an agility judge is I go in to judge the novice ring, and what ends up happening is I can only do at most a three to a five minute briefing. And in that three to five minutes, I'm supposed to somehow share with these exhibitors all of the rules that they need to know. And they have, you know, signed their entry form that states that they've read all the rules. And quite frankly, they very well could have. But here's the problem. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> I, I printed this off. This is from one agility organization. This is 93 pages of regulations, 143 pages of agility guidelines, 
and 91 pages of dog show rules, all right? So put that all together. That's a huge stack of paper, and this is just one agility organization, and these beginner folks are supposed to somehow not only have read all of this information, but also understood all of the information and then apply all of that information into the agility ring. And it can't happen in a judge's briefing that's literally three to five minutes long. And generally, the problem happens in the ring, right? So, you know, these beginner folks, they have people that help them to the trial. They generally have someone that can kind of help them with the entry form. It's, you know, outside the ring, they've got help. Once they enter that agility ring, it's them, their dog, and then me as a judge. What ends up happening as a judge is there's only so much that I can do to help people. And it's not, it's not working. It's not working the way that it is. And where this is really coming home to me is I judged a trial about two months ago and the number of novice dogs that I had to whistle out of the ring before they even took the first obstacle was astronomical. Now, so let's talk about this. Why did I have to whistle them out of the ring? Uh, let's see, we had one dog that never took the first obstacle. It spent the first 45 seconds doing zoomings. Um, we had another dog that they just wouldn't pay attention. We had another dog that came flying up to me and literally almost knocked me over. I have no idea how it didn't knock me over. And by the way, it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful lab. I have labs. I totally get this. The dog was very excited. And um, so what ends up happening is these poor handlers, they're touching their dogs. They're touching the equipment. Um, you know, we don't have the chute anymore, but I can't tell you how many times a novice handler would literally lift up the chute so that their dog could try to go through. Um, that's not going to help them. So what needs to happen is that as, as a judge, the only thing that I can do to help is to start to educate people and start to get them used to the ring before they even come to a trial. So what I have done is I have created a program that is geared specifically for novice and beginner agility folks. And it's literally like a 21 day briefing. And the goal of this is to literally go through everything that they need to know before they enter the ring. So I can't tell you how many times, for example, a novice person will look to me as the judge to begin them. They don't have any experience when it comes to when they should begin. So they don't understand the difference between training, where you put your dog in a sit stay and you just go ahead, you lead out and you start whenever you can, and the actual trial environment where they have to wait for a ring crew to set bars, where they have to wait for a leash runner, where they have to wait for the timer to begin them, where they have to wait for a scribe to make sure the scribe has the right sheet. These are all the things that we'd love to be able to go through with novice in a fun match. However, a lot of areas don't have fun matches, right? And so what we need to do is I'd like to get this program off the ground. It's called the Agility Trial Roadmap, and it's literally giving them everything that they need to understand what's happening inside the ring. So this isn't outside the ring, this is 100% inside the ring. So understanding who the people are, understanding what a walkthrough is, understanding course design, so that they can understand the different challenges that they're likely going to see, where they should start to look for those side switches, where they, you know, um, you know, what happens, for example, um, a run out plane. I can't tell you how many people, even at the excellent level, have no idea what a run out plane is. But as a judge, I'm always judging an exhibitor based off of run out planes. That seems to be kind of a little secret thing that's going on. And I just want to bring that back up so that we can start to, I don't want to say educate, but it is educate. But I, it's 
I'm going to call it empower. I want to empower these folks so that the moment they walk into the ring, they can say, oh, that, that, that. Sometimes it's as simple as knowing what to do with the leash. Um, you know, a, a couple months ago, I had a novice handler took the leash, put it right in their pocket, and off they ran. So there's a lot of different things that are going on that they need to be aware of. Now, here's the thing. The Agility Trial Roadmap is not meant to be, you know, um, it, it's not meant to be a replacement for trainers. And it's also not meant to be specific to an agility organization. So what I'm doing, here's the beauty part of being a judge in multiple organizations, I want to create best practices so that no matter what agility organization this novice or beginner person goes into, they have practiced best practices. So they're starting to create the patterns, the behaviors, you know, between them and their dog in training that they're then going to take into the trial environment. They're going to know exactly why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and that's what we need to do. So sometimes it's as simple as, and this was one that really kind of had me thinking, even the start line. Um, you can imagine how many different start lines are out there. You know, what if the start line isn't, you know, facing the course? What if it's a, um, a start line that they have to come into the ring? What if it's a U-shaped tunnel where they have to come into the ring? Um, how about the exits? What if you have a U-shaped tunnel there? Has anyone told a novice person what they should be doing or even where to go get their leash? Or um, how about the age old, the last obstacle is the finish line where you're putting the leash on your dog. You know, there's lots of things that as the, the years have gone by, we've really missed some of these things and they've failed to become consistent across the board. So I really want to help people to that, to do that. All right, so kind of let me go through a little bit here what I'm really talking about. So the goal of the Agility Trial Roadmap is basically I want to prepare handlers, novice handlers, so that the moment they walk into a ring, they are, they're already guided through. They know all about the trial equipment, the obstacles, the courses, the rules, the what if scenarios, right? Um, so here's a great what if scenario. Uh, you know, what happens if, you know, they're told to go and then all of a sudden the timer's like, wait, 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 wait. What do they do at that point? What if they hear the whistle? What if there's a bar down? What if there's somebody out on course? Uh, I just saw a, a, a run today where um, a volunteer who happened to be a Girl Scout happened to go back on course to set a bar and the dog was coming back around. What happens if the jumps are set wrong? Uh, what happens if they have a conflict? So these are all of the things that trainers, as we think about it, we start to help our folks with this. But what I'd like to do is put it all in one place so that these novice folks have lifetime access to it. They can always go back and review it. They can review it multiple times. But the other part is I'm going to be creating checklists, cheat sheets, things that they can bring with them so that they can literally pull up their sheet and they don't have to depend on somebody else to always point them in the right direction. So basically what I'm looking to do is it's a one of a kind VIP preparation tour of the agility ring. That's that's what I'm looking to do. So a couple of other things I'm going to add in there. Um, I'm also an official measuring judge, and I've taken a lot of video to help these folks to prepare themselves and their dog for measuring. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have gotten to an actual trial and, you know, folks don't know how to fill out the measuring paperwork. They, you know, they have a dog that um, I've actually had people ask me, you know, do you have to touch the dog to measure them? So let's start preparing these folks ahead of time so that when they go to a trial, they know exactly what to do. They're prepared. They're ready to go. The other part that I'm going to do is <laughs> the practice jump. Um, and also all of the things that you cannot do in terms of practice. So I had someone ask me the other day, can I bring my own equipment to the trial site to practice on? Um, 
Great question. How about when there's two practice jumps in a row? Can I use both of those practice jumps at the same time? These are things that novice folks don't know about. And we need to help them because they inadvertently fall into these rookie mistakes. And we don't want them to get in trouble. We want them to come prepared and know exactly what's going on. So, all right, I am actually going to be launching this course uh, on June 20th. It is open now for uh, enrollment, but more importantly, I'm doing this as a beta, right? I want to get this out there, start having some real conversations with people, seeing what else they need in the plan. So I've got, it's right now I've got it set up as a 21 day, the agility trial roadmap, and I'm going to be offering it for $97. During that whole time frame, I'm going to have office hours. I'm going to be answering all questions during live videos. And I also su suspect that there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to be adding in there as well. And so that's the idea. The beta course is really to get a feel for what's going on. I've got a good idea. I've done quite a bit of research, but you know how it goes. There's always things that need to be added into that. So what I want to do is get that out there as a beta. I'll never be offering it at this price again. And it really is to start the conversation with people. All right, here's the other part. I'm not here in this program and class is not meant to take over the job of the trainer. As a matter of fact, I'm positive trainers everywhere are telling their students about this. But there's only so much that they can you know absorb so I want to literally meet trainers in the middle so that we can help to make your students successful on that so if you're a trainer and you have students feel free to contact me privately because I do have a special offer for your students as well so just just kind of throwing that out there all right guys so to sign up, you can go to spotonagility.com, and if you look on the upper right-hand corner, there is actually a link that says Agility Trial Roadmap. And like I said, this is about starting a conversation. It's gonna be interactive. The first group that's going to go through, um, I you know, you're gonna have lifetime access. You'll definitely have items that are going to be added to this. I, I have a whole host of kind of phase two and phase three and it's all about interaction so there's going to be a fi private facebook <laughs> private facebook group so that we can have these questions and like i said i plan to do videos on the answers so that i can start to create a library that's very much like a 21 day judges briefing all right guys um any questions please feel free to uh you know to write in the comments there i can see you guys hey thanks so much shelly for joining um mary hi how are you my gosh you guys are great Lori, how's it going um Lori says i love this idea i've been out of agility for 13 years now i'll bet this would help me uh yeah yeah things have changed a little bit Lori, since you and i started way back when with our first dogs talk about some fond memories there and I'm sure we made some mistakes back then too but uh, yeah definitely lots of things going on there um, okay I'm gonna go ahead and write in the comment section here so you can go to spot on agility.com and that is where you can actually find the link and you can find out some more information I also have a video there uh, Janine will you have a post from your business page so that you can share and get the word out yeah absolutely so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a link out on both the spot on agility Facebook page um, also on my personal page and then I'm also writing up a couple of blog posts to kind of get folks you know um, introduced to it by the way guys I'm not a salesperson right so I'm doing this because this is what I love to do I absolutely love agility I really am very very fond of the beginner novice folks that really is my favorite group I think that they are not as represented out there and um, it kind of breaks my heart when I watch them struggle and this is something that I started back in 2012 really thinking about and doing um, and I just never had a chance to kind of follow through with that you know how life is so um, you know like I said ask me if you've got questions 
you know, these Facebook Lives, like I said, makes me nervous. I'd rather go straight on out to, uh, like I said, the agility competitions with all the, you know, the cameras. I'm so much more comfortable in the ring than I am behind the camera here. But I definitely have a lot of information to share. And uh, I can tell you, I've made some mistakes as a, as a handler too. And it's really interesting being on the handler side, being on the trainer side, and then being on the judge side. So also speaking of being on the judge side, I am definitely going to be sharing the top rookie mistakes that I have seen over the last 20 years. Um, when we last figured, I have probably watched about 170,000 agility runs. So good or bad, I've got some really good info to share on what not to do, what to do, what to avoid, what you should look out for, and, uh, and definitely all those strange things in between. So we were talking about uh, judging stories the other day and, you know, those what if statements and all right. So um, <laughs> I can remember a trial where we literally had gophers popping up in the middle of the agility course. So there's a great question that I'm going to answer. What do you do in something like that? Right. All right. Uh, Maldona, such an awesome idea. And as a trainer, it'd be nice to be able to have people do this education with you. Yeah. And as a trainer, it's hard to tell people everything. You know, and that's exactly what I've been saying. As a trainer, you have a lot to do. You have to do it in one hour. And when it comes down to it, in that one hour, you have to, you know, give these folks what they want in agility, which is they want to be doing the obstacle course. They want to be doing the handling. And I want you to have your students get out there and get into the agility ring and think, oh, that's right. That agility judge told me in my training that I needed to do X, Y, and Z. I needed to watch out for that and have a plan on what they should do when they enter the agility competition ring. Um, like I said, the, one of the biggest places that I really see people struggling in the novice beginner folks is when they enter the ring with their dog. It's like they don't know what to do at that point. They're so focused on the course. They're focused on their dog. They're focused on trying to, you know, get their dog to sit. And it's hard for them to see everything else out there. So if I can help trainers to encourage beginner folks to literally come up with a very specific plan that works within the rules and then also gets them to create these healthy habits so that they don't have to try to remember to do all of those things in a specific order that would be fantastic so that's that's what I've got here um, all right you guys Thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, you know, please go to spotonagility.com, Agility Trial Roadmap. Um, I'm sure you're going to have questions. I am always available. You can IM me at, on Facebook, or if you'd like, you can contact me, Lisa, at spotonagility.com. I love questions, and I've been filtering lots of behind-the-scenes questions that folks have um, on, you know, training and agility. By the way, if you haven't seen my YouTube or my blog post article on how to know if you're ready to trial, that is a fantastic resource for your, you know, folks as well. So my YouTube channel, my blog, I have lots of resources that have been leading up to this agility trial roadmap. And like I said, it's just going to keep growing. We've got to support these guys and I'm asking for your help in doing that. So if you know of any, you know, novice folks, beginner folks who are thinking of competing or are about to begin competing, I'd love to help them with, with this. Like I said, I'm never going to you know, offer this program at the beta price again, but this is also a great opportunity to get in to, you know, like I said, it's $97 for 21 days, and it's one of those, like, get in, ask the questions. They're going to have direct access to me, and I'll, I'll help them. And if I need to create additional resources to answer their question and to help them as well, I'll definitely do that. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and as always, happy handling. And again, feel free to go to spotonagility.com. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.